Hello and welcome to a video where we're going to solve a uh, particular um, pipe hydraulics problem and this uh, particular problem is shown here on the screen a uh, pipe system depicted below uh, from the ground level storage tank through a pump to a vented elevated storage tank can be approximated by an equivalent 10 inch diameter Hayes and Williams coefficient of 120 pipe that's 2,100 feet long. The pump in the system has the performance curve curve shown. So here's our pump performance curve. And we're to, to asked to find the operating point for the system with a single pump in place. So the system's going to push from 150 to 315 feet, at least at some instant. And we want to know its uh, performance curve, assuming those pool elevations are held constant. Uh, make a graph of the system curve for the hydraulic delivery system. Plot the single pump curve on the graph. Then assume that we have two identical pumps in parallel. Determine the operating point for the system with two pumps in parallel. Plot the pin twin pump operating curve on the same graph and estimate the net positive suction head available for the system. We can neglect the suction side friction losses. Okay, so uh, let us um, begin. Uh, what we don't have is any real estate here. Um, I happen to know that it's going to be convenient to express the pump performance curve in terms of cubic feet per second. So let me go ahead and prepare the table now for that, and then we'll go through the calculations. Q. CFS. And the reason we'll do that is my Hayes and Williams uh, formulas are, are built for things in whole um, consistent units, not mixing gallons per minute and cubic feet and so forth. Um, other formulas may have those adaptations already, <coughs> already built in. Um, so what we have to do is now find out how many cubic feet per second corresponds to um, 500 gallons per minute and then uh, 1,000 gallons per minute and so on. Okay, so to do that, let's just um, convert 500 gallons per minute into cubic feet per second and then these are all multiples of 500. So we start with 500 gallons in one minute. One minute is 60 seconds long and there are 7.48 gallons in one cubic foot and so if we check the units when we're done we will have cubic feet per second. So 500 divided by 60 divided by 7.48 is 0 excuse me, is 1.114 cubic feet per second. So that's 1.114 cubic feet per second. A thousand is going to be two of those, so it's 2.228. Two thousand will be twice again, 4.456. Two thousand five hundred will be 5.5704. Fifteen hundred is three five hundred, so it's going to be three point three four two. And the difficult one zero is zero. All right, we now have our um, pump performance curve at least converted into um, cubic feet per second, which will make life simpler. Okay, our next task is to determine the operating point. So what I find useful is I'm going to go ahead and sketch my hydraulic system. And it's basically um, this fairly simple system right here. Going from elevation 150 to elevation 315. And this section of the hydraulic system is 2,100 feet long. 
an inch diameter, CHW equals 120. <coughs> so now we'll go ahead and analyze this information. So we'll call this position one, that position two. Here's my pump. I have the total head at position one, H1, plus the added head of the pump is equal to the total head at position two, plus the head loss along the way. Added head of the pump is equal to H2 minus H1 plus head loss. That's equal to 315 minus 150 plus head loss, which equals 165 plus head loss. And now we'll replace this with its functional form. Um, in discharge form, head loss using Hayes and Williams model is 3.02 times the length times the diameter to the minus 1.167, multiplied by the quantity 4 times the discharge, divided by pi times the diameter squared, times the Hayes and Williams coefficient, all raised to the 1.85 power. <clears throat> if we <clears throat> gather the constants, so our performance curve, so this is the energy that the pump has to provide is 165 plus 3.02 times 2100 divided by 10 over 12 quantity raised to the 1.167 power times 4q divided by pi 10 over 12 quantity squared. Hayes and Williams coefficient is 120, and that's raised to the 1.85 power. <coughs> so as we change q, we'll have to change the added head of the um, pump. So now I find it convenient. I'm going to make a table. Um, actually, we have all the makings of the table right here. I now need HP of Q. This happens to be the system curve. So this is what the system requires in order to um, operate. Okay, so my system curve is literally going to be 165 plus whatever added head is required to overcome the friction losses. Now, evaluating that to me is a pain in the neck. However, I have an online tool that I can use uh, to help me determine the um, uh, system curve at uh, different points. So let's go to our online tool real quickly. The online tool we have <coughs> is head loss in a pipe using the Hayes and Williams formula. Our problem is expressed in SI units. So we'll do that. And what we're going to do is we'll specify flow and the other parts for different discharges. We'll calculate the head loss. And what we'll be obtaining is we're going to be obtaining the results for this half of the expression. So we'll be obtaining values for this for different values of Q. And then we just add those to 165 and use that to populate this table. So let's see if I can set it up to have both things side by side. 
<coughs> looks like I can. So my loss coefficient is 120. My diameter is 10 over 12, but it's expecting it in feet. So 10 divided by 12 is 0 0.833 feet. My length is 2100 feet. And my first discharge I care about is 1.114. <clears throat> submit that and I get uh, 4.13 feet to which I'm going to add 165 so let me put the shut off 165 these are all going to have 165 and then we'll just add those different uh, head losses first is 4.13 We'll go back, we'll change the flow rate to 2.228, rerun the program, 14.91, go back, change the flow rate to the next value, 3.342, run the program, 31.59, go back, Go back to the next value, 4.456. Rerun the program, <coughs> 53.8. And we'll do the last one at 2,500, which is 5.5704. 81.38. Call that 81.4. Now we just add the numbers. So 165 plus 4.13 is 169.13. Um, 165 plus 14.91, 179.91. And I'll just Skip to the chase, this should be 196.59. This should be 218.82. And this one will be 246.39. 38. 246.4. <coughs> and this is 165. Okay, so this curve. These numbers here represent the um, the system curve. So let us go ahead and now make a uh, plot. Okay, so to make a plot, we're going to have to use a graphorama tool. So I'm using this uh, L-shaped piece of plastic called a triangle. So named because I don't know why it's called that, but it's got three angles and that's probably what the triangle is. So on the uh, horizontal axis we're going to have to put um, some sort of scaling to represent our flow rate. Um, we'll do them in 500, 1000, 1500, 2000, 2500, 3000, um, 3,500, 4,000, that should be enough. And on our vertical axis, we want to do um, total heads. And let's make them um, 100, 200, <coughs> 300 feet ahead. Now we'll use our triangle device to try to... Um, Construct a enough of a graph to draw.
some people care about right angles, so we'll try to honor that. This is a sketch. Obviously, if you were doing this, you would use Excel or some other tool that prevents human interaction. And thus, if it comes out of the computer, it must be right. So now we'll label our axes. 500 gallons per minute, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500. Um, so this is my flow rate <coughs> per minute. And this is going to be total dynamic head in feet. And I've chosen 100, 200, and 300. So we'll increaseify this one. So now what we're going to want to do is plot these feet on the dynamic head axis and these flow rates on the gallon per minute axis. So let's slide this over here. So at 500 gallons per minute, our system needs 165 feet of head. At 1,000, it needs 169. At 1,500, 179. At 2,000, 196. At 2,500, 2018 and at oops, I got a mistake. 500 is 169, 1000 is 179, 1500 is 196. So this number, this goes up here, this guy comes over here, and 2500 as 246. And at shutoff, we're at 165. Then we want to uh, join those. So there's our system curve, and we could go on. I'm just going to kind of stretch it on like that. And also, we're asked to plot our pump curve. <coughs> so our pump performance curve, again, taking from this uh, same um, table, shutoff head is 240 at 500 gallons per minute. We're at 225 at 1,000 gallons per minute. We're at 200. At 1,500 gallons a minute, we're at 172. Some line there. At um, 100, uh, 2,000, we're at 140. And at 2,500, we're at 100. So here's our pump performance curve. Our operating point is right about there. And I'm lazy, so I'm going to declare that 1,250 gallons per minute. <coughs> and my total head is oh, probably about 180. Let's see where I'm at. Yeah, right. And 180, 165, 169, yeah, about 180. And we can actually go check that because if we look back at our table, it's not too hard to deduce that our system curve and a pump performance curve intersect somewhere in that red box. Um, so if I choose 1,250 gallons per minute, 
that's equal to 2.785 cubic feet per second. <coughs> I can go back to my online tool and figure out what the head loss is. 0.785. So that's 22.54 plus 165 is, my system is going to require 165 plus 22.54, 187.54 uh, feet of head. <coughs> and I just want to evaluate how my pump is going to operate. So I can use my linear interpolator tool. Um, so when the pump is at 1,000 gallons per minute, it's producing 200 feet of head. When it is at 1,500 gallons per minute, it's producing 172 feet of head. And I want to know what it does at 1,250, a linear interpolate and it tells me it produces 186 feet of head. So at 1,250 gallons per minute, the pump produces 186 feet of head. I'd say that's pretty darn close. So that's my operating uh, point is um, <coughs> 1,250 gallons per minute in total dynamic head in the order of 186 to 187.5 feet of head. So we've determined the operating point. Um, Q is 1250 oh, GPM, TDH. DH is 186 to 188 feet of head. And whatever the system is, it will it will equilibrate around that point. Make a graph of the system curve, plot the single pump curve on the graph that's done right here. Then it says assume two identical pumps in parallel are employed. Determine the operating point for the system with the twin pumps in place. So what changes here now is with two pumps in parallel, the flows add at the same added head. So this column doesn't change. The system curve doesn't change. It can't change. What changes now is the um, uh, provided pump rate. Essentially everything doubles. So this one's going to be 2.228. So this is Q parallel CFS. Um, <clears throat> let's see, that's 500 becomes 1,000, 1,000 becomes 2,000. 4.4 five six fifteen hundred becomes three thousand so I'll actually have to calculate that um, that's two point two two eight times three is right yep six point six eight four now two thousand becomes four thousand so I go two point two two eight times 4, 8.912, and lastly, um, well, I don't need to do the last one, I'm pretty sure that um, we're not going to get much outside of here. So now here's what we have. Um, we still have the pump providing between uh, the intersection, the head part doesn't change, but now the curve is moved to the right. So let's plot the new pump curve for the twin pumps in parallel, and then we'll see uh, roughly where the uh, flow rates fall. Okay, so now at, um, at 
thousand gallons a minute we get that value at 2,000 gallons a minute we get that value at 3,000 gallons a minute we get that value and so on so now our new pump curve is the green curve something like that and here's our um, <clears throat> intersection <clears throat> so our um, intersection looks to be about 1750 gallons per minute so 100, 1750 gallons per minute and the pump produces We'll have to go ahead and uh, figure out the um, the amount of head. Um, I should have did that right. Yep. So now our um, Other thing we have to do is uh, we have to adjust the um, the the system curve. So at 1750 gallons per minute, that's about 3.899 um, cubic feet per second. <coughs> we'll put that value. To calculate the corresponding system curve value. So, in this case, the pump produces head, and our system curve is 42.03 plus 165, which equals 42.03 plus 165 equals 207.3. of head and then we have to see what our pump produces at 1750 gallons per minute so we want to get these back in gallons per minute so that's a 1000 that's a 2000 that's a 3000 so we're between these two we're between these two and again we'll use our interpolator tool <coughs> So at um, 1,000 gallons per minute, our twin pumps produce 225 feet of head. At 2,000 gallons per minute, our twin pumps produce 200 feet of head. And at 1,750 gallons per minute, our twin pumps produce 206.25 feet of head. 206.25 feet. Again, that number and that number are close enough. So our operating point with the uh, twin pumps is <coughs> Q equals 1750 gallons per minute. Total dynamic head is 206 to 207 feet. <coughs> Okay. 
Lastly is to um, estimate the net positive suction head available. We're going to need to know what the vapor pressure head is. We're going to need to know what the absolute head is in the tank. Um, it says we can neglect suction side friction. And so the other one we're going to need is the uh, static head. Okay, so the vapor pressure, we'll assume this is at 25 degrees Celsius. <coughs> Excuse me, um, this is U.S. customary. 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So our vapor pressure is um, 0 0.256 pounds inches squared and we want to convert that into feet of water there is um, 33 feet of water for every 14.75 pounds per inches squared so that'll produce feet um, next we want to know what the absolute pressure is so Pressure at 150 feet elevation. It's going to be pretty close to <coughs> so we'll set this into pounds per square inch. Temperature is in Fahrenheit, and we're going to be 150 feet, and we want our answers in pounds per square inch, so it's 14.62. So in our case, our um, uh, absolute pressure in the in the pool is 14.62 pounds per square inch times 33 feet inches squared 14.75 pounds and then finally the static head is the height of the pump above the um, the height of the water above the pump we don't know what it is I'm going to put in a zero see what happens we always can adjust later so let's do the indicated calculations here point two five six divided by four 14.75 times 33, 0.57 feet. Absolute height at 150 feet is 14.62 divided by 14.75 times 33 is 32.8. Stat is 0 and the friction is zero. And now we'll go to our online calculator, which also happens to give us the ability to <coughs> check net positive suction head available. Comes up with a nice picture. Okay, so our absolute is absolute head surface suction pit. We've computed that as 32.8 feet. Our static elevation, we're going to set at zero. Our friction term is zero, and our vapor pressure was zero, 0 0.57 feet, and it claims we have net positive suction head available 32 feet. Um, so that it would work even better if the pump was lower than the water elevation. And that concludes uh, this particular problem. So here is the results. And the problem just uses the online tools to simplify calculations. That concludes this video.